brain spotting doesn't just process traumas, but it can also help a person access tremendous resources and strength in themselves. In fact, they can even locate brain spots linked up to happiness and wonderful memories. So there are multiple different types of brain spotting configurations, different setups, and I'm going to demonstrate the way I would work with a client, either doing the inside window demonstration or doing the outside gaze spotting demonstration, and I'll explain the difference between both. So right now, if I were doing the inside window gaze spotting, we're utilizing just the frame here that the client has. It's their computer screen. And you're essentially looking at my, my background. So you may discover your brain spot somewhere in my background. In fact, you know, your eyes might, might land right here on this, this little rose here in the background. I use stickers to help clients keep track of things. So whenever they, they maybe find a spot that they land on, you know, I'll plop a sticker right there for them and then they're able to hold their, their gaze there and not have to remember exactly where it is. And so with that going, we're able to use my space, the space in back of me, to allow the client to access those files. It's wild that it's actually able to work that way. Um, so here's how I usually start off. I like to gauge if one side or the other side feels more activated for a client. So I'll typically, before I even start moving around, I'll typically either use a sticker on one side or I'll, I'll use my little brain spotting tool and I'll just hold it for the client. So in just a, a little moment here, if you are at home observing this and you wanna practice along with me, feel free to just notice this spot and see how it feels in your body. And I'm gonna be quiet for a moment. I'm just noticing, does it feel like there's any activation on that side? And it's okay if absolutely nothing came up for you right now, that's okay. And then I'll go to the other side and I'll, I'll hold it there just for a moment to see if any any activation comes up in the person's system. So I'll be quiet for a moment. Just noticing if anything came up. And again, it's okay if nothing came up on either end. Ideally in session, I hold it for a little bit of time. And the clients usually notice that, ooh, they may lean one side with a little bit of activation and the other not much or nothing at all. And whichever side they tend to lean into and they find that, oh yeah, my body's feeling a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress on that side, or maybe a little stress, a little anxiety. Um, we'll just, we'll go there and, and that'll be my first choice. That way we expedite things time-wise. Um, and the reason I want to, you know, make sure it's done in a timely manner is because we're going to be holding that spot with the client for a little while and they need to have enough time and space to be undisturbed in that spot, uh, wherever it may be located. So now going into how I move across the screen, very slowly, I would take my brain spotting tool, my pointer out to the side, and I would go even slower than what I'm doing right now. And somewhere, somewhere along that line, the client might notice, ooh, a little activation. Ooh, I felt myself take a deeper breath or, or a shallower breath, you know, some sort of reaction. And if we happen to find one in, in that space, we'll hold it, I'll, I'll go back to it and we'll hold it and hold it. And what that allows the client to do is they access whatever's there, whatever's disrupting their body. And it may take them a little while to, to sit in that and be able to have some clarity form around it and notice what's coming up for them. Or 
they may be accessing something that is entirely without words. It could be something that was traumatizing from their pre-verbal time, like when they were a very, very young child or baby. Um, or they may have already done so much excellent CBT or DBT therapy that the words have already been processed, but there's still that somatic body response happening. So if, if there's any remnant of that lingering, this can help just, you know, push it, push it through and finally get that last piece to be processed. So then after we've kind of exhausted whatever's on this side or the client's like, okay, that's enough for now. Let's go see the other side. Then we would transition to the other side and very slowly, I very slowly, I would be moving across this side to see what we might discover there. Um, and, and we would go up to and down depending on what timing allows and what we're finding and how the client is feeling. And here's the good news. I left out something very positive. Brain spotting doesn't just process traumas, but it can also help a person access tremendous resources and strength in themselves. In fact, they can even locate brain spots linked up to happiness and wonderful memories. So we can also find that and develop very profound, deep happiness tools for people to use. Uh, and, and so what's the purpose of that? Well, let's say they're having a really hard day and let's say in therapy, you know, Jamie and, and themselves discovered that they have a brain spot right there. And it's related to that amazing trip to Disneyland when they were five years old and they felt so, so good, you know, something like that. So I, you know, if we were to discover something fantastic like that, then they would know where their hat we'll call it a happy spot, where their happy brain spot is located. And let's say they've had a terribly hard day at work. They can just go to that spot, hold some space for themselves, feel that deep breath happen, and it lets them decompress and re-enter their body. So that was one little thing that I, I uh, unintentionally left out, but it can be used for a lot of really, really good stuff. Um, so that is inside window brain spotting. The next one that uh, I'm going to demonstrate is um, the gaze spotting. So this one occurs in the client's space and it happens in their space. So they're seated in front of their computer. And uh, th actually, this one can be done on the phone. I've done it easily on the phone because, you know, it's in their space. They don't have to see exactly what I'm doing because it's about them and it's what their eyes are doing. Um, so anyway, when we're doing gaze spotting, the way that usually comes about is they're talking and they're telling me, oh my goodness, they're, they're describing the thing that happened and it was just so awful. And let, let's say their eyes just go somewhere oh, Jamie, that was so intense. That was so terrible. And so I noticed where their eyes are in relationship to what they're talking about. And then I invite them. I say, can you, would it be all right if you just hold your gaze there? Are you comfortable with that? And generally everyone always holds their gaze and then we'll just hold it and we'll just hash it out together. They may be verbal about it. They may be very quiet about it. And eventually that big breath happens that, and they'll notice that things are titrating down and the intensity is starting to release. Um, it may release completely in that one session. It might release maybe halfway, a quarter of the way, and we'll need to go back and do some more another time. That's totally okay though, because any amount that we're getting out is already allowing their nervous system to feel more well-adjusted. And so then clients can expect to see um, the positive effects of the brain spotting that they're doing. Um, one thing that's very, very positive about it is it doesn't require words. So because it doesn't require words, a client doesn't necessarily run the risk of kind of re-traumatizing themselves by having to retell the story and all of that. We're able to just kind of get into the body 
more or less immediately. So that's another aspect of how it can be very helpful, um, especially to those who find that their triggers are starting to become very overwhelming and in, in too numerous, too numerous to count. It can be very, very helpful for those situations too. So after a client has had um, a brain spotting session, it's very possible that it was a very intense experience. And so what do I mean by intense? It means that a lot of work might have gotten done. Even if it feels like a little work might have gotten done, it can still take a tremendous toll on the physical body. So I always encourage my clients to rest afterwards if they can anticipate that processing will probably continue through the rest of the day and if they see any of the material pop up in their dreamland that's okay too that's very very normal and natural if they are finding that um if they're finding that they're they're kind of getting a little bit overwhelmed by by other thoughts that doesn't happen too often but if it does happen, then it's important to recognize that it's probably a result of everything that we've dislodged. And all that we need to do is just continue going. It doesn't mean that it's not working. What it means is that, well, the dam broke and we're finally getting through a whole bunch of stuff. So if anything like that were to ever come up for a client, um, you know, that, that just means we continue doing the work and they can even continue doing the work too, if they're comfortable. So let's say that they discovered a brain spot that um, was just very uh, full, very full of things. And they're like, wow, there's a lot in there. I need to keep on working through it. They can on their own if they choose to, if they're comfortable with that I will teach tools to make sure that you bring yourself back in when you're done, when you've exhausted that spot or you're, you know, you're done with it for that day. But um, if a person wants to, between sessions, kind of sit with the brain spots that they've discovered, there is nothing wrong with that. It's a very empowering modality because it can be self-applied. Um and I think that that is wonderful. I like a lot of modalities. I'm right now moving into my havening, <laughs> havening work. But I, I love modalities where the clients are able to take it with them because if they're being disturbed by something and they need, they need quick access to a therapeutic experience, they can give it to themselves. And how, how incredible that is to the body to be able to trust oneself and know what you need in order to make yourself feel better. Um, and it, conversely, you know, it, it, not necessarily doing work outside of session, but maybe just, just returning to a happy spot that we might have discovered together. That ends up being an excellent resource for the client after they've done, um, you know, a significant brain spotting session. Um, and so... The other side of it, get rest, drink water, flush out, you know, anything. We become very, very loaded with chemicals as we are um, moving through a lot of processing. You know, we can have a lot of cortisol dumping into our system. We can have an adrenaline release. And uh, we, we just want to drink water and give ourselves space after those types of uh, heavy, heavy, work experiences on our our own wellness <laughs>